Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I just want to dig into a topic that I'm really pumped about, and that is all the different ways that you can integrate an iPad into your Logic Pro workflow on your Mac. Now, before we go any further, I sound a little hoarse and a little groggy. I apologize. The weather's been crazy and I'm suffering as a result. But I just want to show you how awesome the iPad is increasingly becoming with a Mac. And I'm not even talking just about Logic Remote, the application, which is awesome in its own right. I used to kind of think the iPad was the lamest device that Apple offered. And I'm not trying to be a hater. It's just like when it was first introduced, we had the iPhone, you know, which is this awesome multi-touch phone. And then we had a Mac, which is a computer. And it seemed like the iPad was trying to be both, but accomplishing neither, in my opinion. But since I tried out Logic Remote, on the iPad, I have fallen in love and I love having it around. And I can't think of a single hardware controller that even comes toe to toe with Logic Remote. I mean, you have, you know, multi-touch, full tactile experience of Logic Pro where you can literally reach out and touch faders and perform. You know, we have a multi-touch mixer, a keyboard you can play on, drum pads, uh, smart controls, a live loops launcher, now a step sequencer. I, I just can't think of anything else that competes in a such a tightly integrated manner. But I want to set aside Logic Remote for now because I have a whole video dedicated to how awesome it is on the iPad. I'll link to it in this video and below. And I really want to dig into two relatively new features of macOS and iPadOS integrating together. And that's number one, Sidecar. And number two, the really new universal control. First, let's dig into Sidecar. I believe Sidecar was introduced with iPadOS 13. And what it allows you to do is basically extend your Mac screen to your iPad. So Previous, you had your Mac screen doing its own thing, your iPad doing its own thing, but now you can extend the Mac screen to the iPad and treat it like a second computer monitor, which can be really helpful if you're working with limited screen real estate like on a MacBook. To get started with Sidecar, you do have to double check Apple's own technical specs to see if your Mac and iPad are both compatible. I'll include a link down below. If they are, that's awesome. Next up, you have to enable certain features and preferences. You have to make sure that both devices are running on the same Apple ID. And if they are, you can then connect your iPad to your Mac using a cable or to run wirelessly. You need to make sure that on both devices, you have Bluetooth enabled, Wi-Fi enabled, and also handoff enabled. And handoff is a function you have to dig into the system preferences for, the general preferences. So on our Mac, we're going to go to system prefs, or you can use spotlight by using command spacebar, and we'll type in general. And once we dig into the general prefs, right at the bottom here, we have this option called allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. So once enabled, we'll then go to the iPad and do the same thing. We'll go to the system prefs and under general, we have airplay and handoff. And second down, we turn on handoff on the iPad as well. And you are off to the races. Next, you'll need to take a look at the display preferences. And of course, we could navigate within the preferences here or use Spotlight, type in Display, or we're just going to go to the right-hand corner here and click on Display right here. So we're going to select Display Preferences. And you can see out of the gate that I have two displays connected to my Mac. I have my primary one, one behind me for anybody else in the studio. And usually it's on when I'm not filming. And one is mirroring the other, meaning that whatever is on this screen here that you see is also reflected on the screen behind me. Now, we don't see an iPad at all, but if we go to add display, we have two different options now for our iPad. So I'm going to select mirror or extend, and this is for sidecar. And once we do this, it's going to take a second, but now we're going to see the desktop of the Mac OS on the iPad. So there it is. We have the taskbar. We have some other functionality, and it looks like Monterey. So if you take a look here, you can see that we can orient this iPad anywhere around the Mac OS display. So if we move this to the right, and if I hover my mouse to the right, there it is on my iPad. Obviously, if we go in the other direction here, let's move it to the left-hand side, float it over. And then my iPad sits beneath my primary screen here. So I'm just going to move it to the bottom. And there we have it. Perfect. You can also mirror your display as well on the iPad if you prefer. So you could do this within the display settings, I believe. Let's take a look. Yep. Or you can just right click or hold control and click for different options. So you can just set the iPad as the main display 
or extend your display or mirror the display. So there we have it. We can see everything on my Mac on the iPad, but I don't really prefer that. So let's go back, select the iPad and let's stop mirroring. Cool. You can also see we have two options to show the sidebar and the touch bar. And the sidebar is this thing on the left-hand side. And the touch bar is just like the touch bars on the old MacBooks, where you are able to play with different controls on screen or on that bar. So in this case, let's turn this off. Let's get out of here. In Logic Pro, we're being offered different controls based on the track that we select. So if I select my main vocal track here, we see different options. If I select level by touching on the iPad screen, we can see the levels being adjusted in the mixer, which is really cool. We can X out. We can also adjust different aspects of the EQ. You can see the little EQ display being adjusted. That to me is a little more novelty than I really care about, but it might be interesting to you. I personally prefer just to turn off the sidebar and touch bar. And you can do that by clicking on the new icon right up here for displays and hide each. What's most interesting to me about Sidecar is that you can move windows to your iPad now. Sometimes you just don't have enough screen real estate. And if you want to have the piano roll open, in this case, let's select this track here. If you want the piano roll open, but you don't want to take it up half the screen, well, let's just select it and pop it out. So I grabbed the tab and I dragged it out. And then if you bring your mouse right to the green button here, we can move this to my iPad. And just like that, now we have the piano roll display on my iPad. And if we select different tracks, obviously it updates to the region selected. So this is really cool because we can float down here and we can start to examine what's going on down here, make adjustments. If you prefer that this particular window doesn't change with every track and region you select, no problem. Just click on the little link icon here. And now when we select new tracks, it stays focused on that one track. How awesome is that? And then we could also, you know, open the various editors for audio tracks. So if we select this or the scissors right here, we could pop this out and we can move that. So let's get rid of the piano roll and let's bring the editor down here instead. Or just by hovering and then moving to the iPad. Beautiful. This is awesome. One feature that I really like about Sidecar is the ability to move plugin windows to the iPad. Because I often like to keep the multimeter and some other metering plugins available and open so I can see what's going on in a project. And that's so awesome because now we can keep a bird's eye view on the tonal balance of your mix, correlation, levels, loudness from a secondary display. And people pay like several hundreds of dollars for a specific loudness metering system that they can watch. And we can just do this on an iPad with Sidecar. Also with the Atmos renderer, it's really awesome to throw it down there so you can see where all the 3D objects are floating around. Next, I want to show you the possibilities of universal control with your iPad and Mac. Now, universal control was supposed to be released last year, but they clearly had some bugs they had to work out. And if you even take a look at the Monterey webpage on Apple's website, universal control is still considered in beta. So I can't guarantee you'll have a flawless experience, but so far it's been great for me. And what Universal Control provides is the ability to use your mouse or trackpad and keyboard of your Mac interchangeably between your Mac and your iPad. I think this is really interesting, specifically with Logic Remote, but it's with about any application on your iPad. So obviously, 12.3 Mac OS is required on a Mac, and you'll have to take a look at the tech specs again to see if your iPad and Mac can support this functionality of Universal Control. If it does, perfect. So we're going to go up to the display preferences again, right here. And you can see it's already offering me this option to link. Again, both your iPad and Mac will have to be on the same Apple ID. You'll have to connect your iPad to your Mac physically with a cable or wirelessly. You have to ensure that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and handoff in those general preferences are enabled on both devices. Once set up, we'll go into the display preferences again. And under Add Display, we also have this option now to link our keyboard and mouse to that iPad. So let's do that right now. I'm going to open up my iPad and we're off to the races. Again, you can orient the iPad in any direction with the Mac. So in this case, I'm just going to set it below because that's where it physically is. So it makes the most sense. 
And if I hover my mouse below, the mouse pushes through to the iPad. I don't really get that little bar thing going on that you see in videos, but it's just floating effortlessly. And you can open any application easily. But if we hover our mouse below, you know, let's pop open Logic Remote. So there we have it. So let's close these display preferences. And what I think is so interesting about universal control is obviously you can use your mouse and keyboard with any part of the iPad in terms of an app, which is super cool. So you can be typing and dragging photos in between. In fact, if we go down here, let's navigate to voice memos. So this is super cool. We can actually grab an audio file from the voice memos app and drag it right into Logic. Oh yeah, there's that voice memos app and it just brought it right into the, my project. That's so awesome. But again, let's navigate to Logic Remote. And what I find very interesting about this unique collaboration is that now you can, you know, impact anything in Logic Remote by clicking on it, you know, and performing or interacting with it with your mouse. So what I like to use universal control for is the mixer. Now, I love Logic Remote, but the mixer for me, it just doesn't pull me towards it. Maybe because I'm so used to using a mouse when working on a computer. But that's why I like universal control, because I can hover my mouse to the iPad and I can adjust the faders with my mouse and I can solo tracks with my mouse. And I don't know, it's super cool because the mixer on the iPad has, you know, way more throw than any of the faders in the mixer in Logic Pro. I mean, look at that. There's, there's so much more resolution down here to mess around with. I like it a lot. I also like that you can, you know, flip through the different options, you know, for audio effects. I do wish that the channel EQ and linear EQ weren't the only plugins that had a GUI that you can interact with. I mean, if we take a look at some of these other plugins, I mean, I, I definitely don't want to mess with any of those, but I really like the faders. I really like the smart controls on the iPad. And I also like that when you hit play and you're playing through your session, you have this preview of what's playing where, and you can gravitate towards it by clicking. That's awesome. I love that. And again, the smart controls. So if we go here, oh yeah, well you can have smart controls up and running as you want to use them. So I, I really don't have a lot to say about universal control because it is, you know, relatively limited functionality when using it with Logic Pro, but I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here. And I think that's really the subtext of this entire video is that the Apple ecosystem is getting more and more connected between devices. And I think that's an exciting opportunity for us Logic Pro users or GarageBand users or main stage, whatever you use. I feel like there's so much opportunity here. I mean, just with the iPad and Logic, you know, between Logic Remote, Sidecar, Universal Control. I mean, throw in the fact that now with spatial mixes, you can use Apple's own headphones with head tracking. I mean, in fact, just to show you, I purchased a pair of the Macs to, to test this out, to see if mixing and spatial audio would be helpful on these things. And, you know, it's a consumer device. It's, it's designed to flatter and not really show you imperfections, but I don't know. I have to say it's probably the most convincing experience of spatial audio I've had so far with using headphones. So I guess that's really the subliminal message here, but I really do love using the iPad both for universal control and also Sidecar and Logic Remote. So I really hope this video has been helpful for you and it's encouraging you to get started creating with Logic with all these tight integrations. It's really exciting, I think, to be in this period of time in the Apple ecosystem. If this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel Why Logic Pro Rules. Subscribe to the email list on the website whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.